Today I'm going to talk about the watery world of van life plumbing and give you a complete overview of our van setup. I know this isn't the coolest video in the world, but it's definitely going to be the wettest and I'm going to try and keep it as entertaining as possible. If you've been following our van life series and you saw our latest video, I gave you a brief update on the progress we made so far, but we're getting really close to the finish line and hoping to be done within one week. It's still a little messy though, so I'm going to clean this up before we get started. Okay, van's clean, sunrise is over, but here's the main components of our van. 36 gallon freshwater wheel well tank by Northwestern Conversions, a 20 gallon gray water tank underneath the van with an electronic ball valve. We have an indoor shower, an outdoor shower, a kitchen faucet, Rickson's hydronic heating system, which heats our air, our water, and our floors, a recirculation pump to keep hot water in our lines continuously, a dual water filtration system from Guzzle H2O, which is a carbon filter and a UV filter, and an OGO composting toilet, which I'll get into all of these components in a little bit more details in this video. Here's Taylor, by the way, painting. We try and get some work done before Wyatt wakes up, which is usually like 5.30 to 7.30, and then late at night, anytime after 8 p.m. Good morning. Okay, so this is where the magic begins. Right here is our water inlet fill. I opted to put this on the outside of the van compared to our previous van. We had it on the inside, but every time we filled it up, we had to open the door. So for a place that was really windy, if it was really cold, then we were letting all of that cold air into the van and we just didn't really think it was that beneficial. But after filling this thing up a couple times, the inlet is actually kind of a flat hose, so I can't really crank the pressure or I'm gonna get some kickback. So that's one downside of using this with a hose that's not really too steep of an incline. And that's unfortunately because my tank is so high and my fill is on the top, the hose is not able to have that steep angle. Like I said, right down here is the water fill inlet. So it's on the top of the tank, which is cool because we're actually able to fill up the tank all the way to the top. Instead, if you had an inlet on the top, on the side, you really can't maximize the tank's capacity and fill it all the way to the brim. Also, you wanna make sure you're using a food grade quality hose for the intake and for basically all of your plumbing lines because you don't wanna be tasting any nasty plastic chemicals or just putting that all over your body. From here we go down through the water tank into the water pump, which goes into the accumulator. And from what I've read, you wanna loop this because it creates a lot of vibration. So the loop helps reduce noise. Through the accumulator, up the fresh water line which goes all the way to this T, which comes to the recirculation pump, I'll get into later, and comes down. And then it goes to a T here, which goes down to our hot water and then continues to our cold water. So this is our cold water here. And then the hot water goes down to this T system below. And that T continues into another T and then a 90 into our heat exchanger. So this heat exchanger is by Rickson's and this is how we heat our water. It goes into this heat exchanger. This is very hot, comes out hot, which is why it's right here, into the water mixer. So this system generates a lot of heat. So we have this hot water mixer to basically control the water and make sure it's not scalding hot. So it mixes with the cold water and the hot water after it goes to the exchanger to bring that temperature back down to a more reasonable hot water temperature. From there, it goes out of the water mixer and then it supplies our hot line. So there's our hot going to the outdoor shower and then the lines continue into the system. So the cold water line is nothing fancy. It basically is just a T, it splits to the shower, and then it splits to the kitchen faucet. But our hot water line, ooh, our hot water line gets me really excited because we have a recirculation pump that basically, once our water gets hot, we're able to recirculate that through our lines. So when you think about taking a shower at home, sometimes you gotta turn the hot water on, but you gotta wait like one to two minutes for it actually to get hot. And that's because there's stagnant cold water sitting in the lines and basically wastes away into your drain. So with a recirculation pump, we don't have to worry about that because we can circulate that cold water back into the system and replenish it with hot water before even opening the spout to the kitchen faucet or turning on the shower. And how this works, there's no tea that splits off the hot water from the shower to the kitchen. 
it's one continuous flow. So we have our hot water coming from the mixer. 90s over. And then it goes up to the shower mixer. And then it goes into the shower mixer and then it tees. And then it continues right down here, back down. That's why there's two hot pipes down here. And then it comes back and then up across into the kitchen galley where it tees up again and comes back across the galley and then into the recirculation pump which goes back to the cold water line and continues the flow. So to recirculate the water we simply just that's our water pump button we just turn on the recirculation pump button and you can probably hear that noise so the water is just circulating through that hot water line pulling from the heat exchanger and sending the cold water back to that cold line. In our last van, we had a separate water faucet for drinking water and we bought a cheap carbon filter off Amazon and stored it underneath the sink. But for this van and now that we have a baby, we wanted to step up our water filtration game and we actually reached out to Guzzle H2O to see if they would want to partner with us and luckily to our benefit, they said yes. And we have their stealth water filtration system, which is a carbon filter and a UV filter in this van. I'm super stoked about this system because Guzzle H2O is built for the adventure, the outdoor life enthusiast and is a part of the van life community. So they know what we need in terms of water filtration and know that we can sometimes get water from sketchy areas. So their filters are top notch and I'm super excited to have the combination of the carbon filter and the UV LED filter as well. In terms of installation, it was really easy. It comes in a kit, but if you have a really tight space, they also have flexible options. It's called the Stealth Flex, where the UV filter and the carbon filter are two separate components and you can basically just connect them via water lines uh, and place them wherever you want. But I bought this single kit and this is the Stealth 5, which is the smaller of the two versions of the Stealth system which is the Stealth 5 and the Stealth 10, and the, that I believe is just a difference in carbon filter size. So if you want a bigger carbon filter, go 10. If you want the one that we have, go 5. We are also an affiliate partner with Guzzle H2O, so I'll leave our link below if you want to check them out and get them in your van. Or they also have this really cool freshwater system where you could just filter water out of a river. So even if you don't have a van, if you like to camp outside, maybe check that out because it's a pretty sick setup. Also, one last thing I forgot to mention and then I'll move on from Guzzle H2O. You might notice a green light there, which indicates that power is going to the UV filter. But as soon as I turn the cold water line on and it senses water going through the line, I believe there's a flow switch. I think a flow switch. So when water goes through the flow switch, it activates that UV filter and starts filtering out that nasty bacteria. So I'm gonna turn the water faucet on and it should go blue. So we talked about our hot and cold lines from the tank to our shower, to our outdoor shower, and to the kitchen faucet. Now let's talk about where that water goes into the gray tank and how it gets there. When we turn our waters on, it drains obviously, just like your home. This drains into one 20 gallon fresh water tank instead of the two five gallon tanks that we had on our last fan. The reason why we went with one larger tank is for multiple reasons. One, we don't have to worry about two tanks falling down, so lower maintenance, and lower maintenance on the electronic ball valves. Our last van, I think I had to buy three electronic ball valves because they just get corroded. There's so much debris flying up there. You just need to replace them over time. I think it's just inevitable. So I just have one tank now and there's only one ball valve to manage. For drainage, I opted to use the Hepvo waterless P-trap instead of a P-trap because it just takes up more space. And I have this on the kitchen and the shower side, which is really nice. It's basically like a whoopee cushion. If you could imagine the flapper of a whoopee cushion. So the water is able to flow through but not allow air back in because that whoopee cushion just I guess sticks and then doesn't allow any air back up. But then we have everything connected to a inch and a quarter hose which is super thick. I don't really need to worry about like food debris getting stuck and clogging the line. So I opted for a thicker hose and I have that for both the shower and the kitchen as well. 
This hose also has like metal running through it, so it's not gonna kink when you bend it, which is really nice and something that you don't have to worry about, especially when you're running the line underneath the van and over the muffler and the drive shaft and all that stuff. So that was a good thing. So my gray tank actually fits right next to the diesel tank, and this isn't intended for it. Just, we got lucky with the shape of it, and I basically just bent aluminum flat angle bar i guess not angle just flat aluminum bar and bolted it to the van via the diesel tank bolts as well as rib nuts on the edge of the tank so it's a perfect snug little fit here and i'm super stoked how it turned out okay it's now time to talk about where we poop mm -hmm. and pee and if you're familiar with rvs then you know most rv systems have a black water tank which is the tank that holds your urine and your poop and it gets really, really nasty. No one likes to empty black water tanks because it stinks. It can get on your hands and it's just really, really disgusting. You have to stick your hand, no, just pull the chain. Smart lad you are. What would you do without me besides stick your hand in that poop infested water? I mean, you're welcome for marrying you. Good call. So we opt to go to the composting route, which means you separate your urine and your number twos. Meet Ogo, our new composting toilet that we'll be using in this van and is a big upgrade from our previous van's composting toilet, the Nature's Head. If you're familiar with composting toilets, then you definitely heard of the Nature's Head one because it's like the OG and it's been around for decades. However, one thing that I don't like about it is that it's been around for decades and it hasn't been improved at all whatsoever. We did have it in our last van. It definitely worked, but the seat configuration wasn't really good for Taylor. It was very difficult to, I don't want to get into all the details, but it just wasn't comfortable. And when I was looking for new alternative composting toilets, I was really pleased with the features and design of Ogo. I'm gonna pop a little chart up on the screen to help explain why we went with this, but the features alone, just, it was a clear winner. It has the largest urine holding tank among the composting toilets on the market with 2.4 gallons. It has an electronic agitator, so you don't have to turn a handle. It has an electronic sensor indicating when the urine is full, so you don't have to see it like in the nature side, you can visibly see it. Now you can just look at the indicator, and if it's red, then it means it's time to swap that out. There is actually a real urine divider. So there's a wall here. In the nature's head, there's no wall, which is just crazy to me. Something that is just, it doesn't make any sense. So now we have a complete separated wall, and this is something that you wouldn't really understand how important it is until you use it. And it has a fan. Now I know there's other toilets in the market that do not have a fan so it's I guess easier to stow away and store but that's just kind of I don't know I'm not sure if I'm super pumped up on the idea of just having no way to dry the compost out because the whole point of compost is to dry it and remove moisture so we opted to stick with one with a fan and it helps eliminate smells as well but yeah this is our go-to we're gonna secure it to a teak wooden floor underneath so it doesn't slide around in the shower and that's where we'll stow it. We'll stow it right in the shower and we'll take it out when we want the shower. Now you could keep it in and just get it all wet, but we just rather just remove it so we have more room and it's really not hard to do. Go into the bathroom. Fun stuff, huh? Love talking about it. You might be wondering where we put the hose and the 12 volt power line and that is in this little boat hatch here in the shower wall. We did that in our last van and it worked extremely well. It was completely waterproof and it's completely tucked away when the toilet's out of the shower so you don't have to worry about like zip locking the 12 volt extension or just have any water leaks at all. This is actually the first time I'm plugging the toilet into the shower and it's so nice that the vent fan is on a swivel. That 90 elbow that you connect the hose to the toilet swivels. So if you're adjacent to a wall, you don't have to worry about having that wall get in the way of the hose, which is just, they put thought into this, which I'm super stoked about. And lastly, our Rixens hydronic heating system. I created an entire video on it, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but basically it heats up its own coolant loop and creates heat via heat transfer plates. So I showed earlier that we had the cold water line going through that metal plate and the heating system heats that plate up really hot and then as the cold water goes through it, hot water comes out and that's how we get our hot water. 
The system itself has a constant hot water button so we can turn that on and then it'll keep the coolant and the heat exchangers nice and warm, actually very hot, and we can have on-demand hot water whenever we need it with our recirculation pump. We also have three ways to keep this heating system hot and that's via the furnace underneath the van, just like an S-bar diesel heater. We have a S-bar hydronic heating system underneath the van that heats this system. There's an electronic cooling element as well, so if we're at a campground and we want to plug into shore power, we could heat it via electricity. And then lastly, when we're driving in the van, this system is connected to our engine's coolant loop as well, so when we drive, the heat generated from the engine is typically just wasted heat. We're actually taking that energy bring it back to this system and able to heat our system when we drive which is really nice we'll be able to have hot air hot water and heated floors when we're driving which is just you can't beat it but that is the entire setup of our van it's the entire plumbing overview i really hope i didn't miss anything if you have any questions drop a comment below i will link every single product that we have for our plumbing system in the description and yeah thank you so much for watching guys this might be our last van build episode we just want to hit the road summer's almost over so we just kind of put the camera down and got heads down on the build and trying to crank out as much as you can we've been making really good progress and we're just trying to keep that momentum going so thanks guys we'll see you next week